Held, who it feels like the Lakers wanted for years. <laughs> Join the Warriors in a decision-making process outlined in The Athletic. There was four authors on this article. I'll just read what they wrote. Heald didn't make a final decision until after a late Wednesday night call with Steve Kerr and then a night to sleep on it. Oh, nice. Heald chose the Warriors because of the opportunity to win, per league sources. His suitors included, and we did not make this up, the Detroit Pistons Lakers. <laughs> What does this say about the Lakers, Brew, that they're grouped with the Detroit Pistons? Well, they're not grouped with the Detroit well, they're Pistons. Not, uh, they're much better than the Pistons. You, you going to argue that? They did win one more playoff game. so you have to. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is interesting, Nick, and I think you'll agree, because neither the Warriors or the Lakers are, like, close to a title. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Heels going somewhere where they expect to win. We'll talk about later. If they can get Lowry marketing, sure. Then I really like him as a contender. But right now, I would even argue, and we talked about this last year, I think the Lakers are slightly better than the Warriors. They have because been of each their of size. the last two years. Right. They're, they're Because of AD inside and their size overall, well, yep. I think they're generally better. Yeah, and, and that's not like a hot take, Brew. They, no, the no, Lakers no. made right. the playoffs last year. The Warriors didn't. And, and the year the before, Warriors the Lakers the before. beat them in the playoffs. Right. So go ahead. Um, it boils down to this, simple and plain, I think. And there are a few other factors, but really, he understands, okay, neither the Warriors or the Lakers are really likely to win the championship next year. But if you don't win in L.A., you're the problem, and you get the blame. If you don't win in Golden State, you just don't win in Golden State. That's a big difference. Like, if you – because whenever LeBron doesn't win – Everybody else gets blamed. LeBron has gotten blamed a lot of times, too, in the past. But right now, everybody's like, what does he need? He needs more help. If you don't go there and play great, look at all every role player on their team, save maybe Austin Reeves, is being looked at sideways. No, Austin Reeves got looked at, too. Okay. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, Rui and D'Angelo, and, and I get D'Angelo in the playoffs. Yeah. Austin Reeves, but that's the thing. Torian Prince, who just signed with the Bucks. Yeah. So, I think Heald understands that. Not to mention, they're, look, the Lakers got a lot going on. It's, obviously, wherever LeBron's at, it's the, the Mac microscope is huge because he's LeBron. But then you got the issue with Bronny. Then you got J.J. Redick, a coach who, who knows whether or not he can coach. And I think he also looked at, look, Steve Kerr, we know he's a great coach. J.J. Yeah. J. Redick, but who knows. I buy that. And the, the assistant coach for Golden State is head coaching. One of the assistants is head coaching the uh, bah bah Bahamas national team, which uh, sure. Heald is playing for. So he had a lot of reasons. But I do think ultimately it's like if we don't win it in L.A., which we're not, I'm a, I might get blamed if we don't win Golden State. So all, good. so all, all, you know, deal with all of those. But I also want to kind of set the record straight on something. The Lakers couldn't sign Buddy Heald. Like this, I, I thought this for four reporters to be on this story. It's an interesting one. LeBron James was not taking a discount for them to sign Buddy Heald. They don't have the money. So, like, this was not available to them. Buddy Heald was not choosing. I thought it was really odd reporting that he, yeah, that he was choosing between the Pistons, who have cap space, the Warriors, right. who were able to do it because of the mid-level exception they were able to open up, and then the Lakers, who were not in on it. Like they were previously yeah, in previous they iterations. They only have the taxpayer mid-level. Right, and so they, they, they couldn't sign him, so it felt a little... Uh, opportunistic to put the Lakers in the story because it creates th this conversation, which is fine, so be it. But the Lake LeBron James was not no. taking a pay cut to open up space for Buddy Heald, and the only way the Lakers could have gotten Buddy Heald was if LeBron James took a pay cut to open up that space. So I think that's it's, the absolute uh, only way. Well, unless you're going to trade a trade Rui Hachimura. Trade a player that's going to make the amount of money that he makes. He just got two years, 21 million bucks. And I picked Rui, but, you know, I guess uh, Gabe Vincent, someone who's making – I don't think that's Gabe's making 10. That's a serious reporting the, mistake, yeah, if that's the case. Yes. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. I, I think it is a very bad reporting mistake that was, I, I will say, done uh, with good intention. But the Lakers could not get Buddy Heald. And so, I, unless they were going to trade a player away, unless LeBron was going to take a pay cut for it, and LeBron was not taking a pay cut for Buddy Heald, I know that. So that's the first piece of it. The second piece is kind of the more 
abstract ideas, which is, are the Warriors more attractive than the Lakers Mm -hmm. who get rid of the CBA stuff for the reasons Brew mentioned? I think a lot of those things are correct. I also, one of the things that jumped out to me that was noteworthy was this. Steve Kerr got him on the phone. And that, to me, is why the, the Clay thing was frustrating and other things with the Lakers are frustrating. Because I do think it's noteworthy and, and meaningful for the power brokers and important people in a franchise to talk to a person and sell them on a roll. If, if, you're, if you're, your buddy healed, I bet Steve said, hey, a lot of shots opening up now with Clay gone. We, you fit what we're doing. Like, I think basketball-wise, there's a lot of reasons. Even though Buddy totally fell out of the rotation with Philly, they, he was basically co- DNP coach's decision and until their final playoff game. Him, right. You would have thought they could have used him. So, for Buddy Heald seems to be much more sought after by teams that don't have him <laughs> than team, the team that he that. currently is on. For yeah. some reason, I don't know. I've always liked the player. And, so, and the Lakers, obviously, were trying to get him for a long time previously. But the, the other piece of it is I, I agree with you that guys around LeBron get a lot more blame than guys around Steph. But don't you also think LeBron gets a lot more blame than Steph? Like, don't you? When, when the Warriors lose, nobody's ki- – I think that everything around LeBron is amplified. Yeah. And so I think the player – I think blame is amplified on him more than it is on KD or Steph or, you know, whomever in, is in his yep. tier. And blame is placed on his Steph teammates more. Steph doesn't get more. much blame at all. At all. I mean, That's yeah, why I was I – mean, like, when the Warriors lose, they just – it's like, oh, they lost. Right, like, right. nobody's blamed. When the Lakers lose – Everybody's blamed. I'm blaming Palenka, Darvin Ham, teammates, LeBron, whomever. So I think all of it is just so much more amplified. All right. Well, free agency period coming to a close. There's a handful of guys uh, still out there looking for homes. DeMar DeRozan, fresh off another Kendrick Lamar cameo, probably the best player available. Is there any move the Lakers can make to salvage this offseason? Well, there, there really aren't many. Uh, look, I mentioned yesterday Trey Young. They don't seem to have much interest in Trey. I get it. You'd have to, he'd be a max player. Is he getting you over the top? I like Trey there. I think he's a good fit. Can I ask you a question about that? Did your opinion on that change once they hired Nate McMillan? And Trey and Nate, obviously, oh, that's, that's a big problem. Yeah, no. I think that I mean, kind of right. X'd out Trey is a yeah, possibility. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think he's a pop, I don't think they're really looking at him with or without Nate, yep. but sure. But, you know, who knows? Maybe it, you, they could have yeah. you know, reconciled or whatever. Uh, I do like Kuzma. If they, I, I'd give up Rui Hachimura for Kuzma. Yeah. I like Kuzma oh, there. Sure. Um, but I, other than that, I mean, DeMar DeRozan, I don't know where he's getting his money at. You know, he's talking about the sign and trade, he, or he may have to take the mid-level somewhere. The Lakers have the smaller mid-level available. Could he look at, let me go one year somewhere, play really well, and then next year when money opens up for more teams, I can get something. But the bottom line is there really isn't much out there. I think it's going to have to be J.J. Redick really working some magic with the roster, doing sure. some different things. And then the guys that were injured last year that I've mentioned, Gabe Vincent, Garrett, Jared Vanderbilt, Spencer Dinwiddie, who are all pretty good players, them really stepping up, staying healthy, and playing well. That's really how the Lakers are going to improve. And, and maybe Dalton Connect. He is 23. So you Giving think, is something. he ready to play? Yeah, if he gives them something. Okay. Um, here's the question. There's, I had a list of free agents here of, yeah, that are still the available. Best, yeah, none of them are moving the needle is, I and, assume, what you're going to say. Wait, well, first of all, a lot of them have already been on the Lakers. Yeah. Dinwiddie, Beasley, <laughs> Lonnie Walker, Markeith Morris, JaVale McGee, Tristan Thompson back again if you want him for the – fourth time, and then maybe trade targets. Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma have already seen this, too. (laughs) But when you're talking about DeMar, and we talked about this yesterday about the Lakers' culture compared to Celtics. The Celtics had a plan, and we're like, all right, 3 and D guys, tall guys, guys that can defend, we're going to shoot a lot of threes. That's our identity. That's who we're going after. Did you say tall guys is one of them? <laughs> it's the NBA, bro. Well, besides that's, that's, true. Everybody's tall, though. Okay, that's You're right. right. I would long defenders is one, another way to put it. But, yeah, I agree. Long, okay, you want, you want a 10 dollars word? Long, <laughs> range, 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 just athletic, tall, can I, tall guys. Can I explain it? Like 